Hello and welcome to Cisco ASA Training 101. My name is Don Crawley. I'm from soundtraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington-based publisher of learning resources and provider of accelerated training for IT professionals. This time, we're going to show you how to add Radius to Windows Server 2012 so you can authenticate Cisco ASA VPN users. Our ASA software version is 9.11, and our uh, Windows version is Server 2012. This is a companion to my book, The Accidental Administrator, Cisco ASA Security Appliance. The book is not required, but if you'd like to get a copy to follow along, it's available through the usual online resources and at www.soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Here's your equipment software requirements. You simply need one computer running Microsoft Windows Server 2012 with Active Directory domain services already installed. And if you want to test the uh, configuration, then you'll need an ASA security appliance as well, which we'll be using, but that's not required for the installation, just for testing it after you're done. Prerequisites. In order to do this exercise, you'll need an Active Directory administrator user account and password on your Windows Server 2012 box. Here's a summary of the steps. We're going to go into the Windows Server 2012 computer and we'll add the network policy and access server. Then we'll add the network policy server feature. We'll register the server in Active Directory. We'll add and configure the ASA security appliance as a client, and then we'll test the configuration from the ASA. So it's fairly straightforward, as these things often are. Here's your disclaimer. This video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. There are no guarantees whatsoever. Please do not attempt these procedures on a production system without first testing them for security and suitability in a lab environment. Performing these procedures may open your system to the public internet and subject your network to attack. So, make sure you have current backups and take precautions, including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data. Always good advice. So now we're logged on to our Windows Server 2012 box as administrator for the demo, and let's go ahead and click on the server manager. So we'll come down and click on the server manager in the corner. It'll open up. And there's the server manager dashboard. As you can see, the, the, uh, there's a progress indicator at the very top, that little blue bar that was going across, that is going across, and uh, that indicates that it's now polling itself to find out what roles are already installed. This takes a moment, and as soon as it's done, then we can uh, add roles and features, and that's what we want to do. So now you can see that the dashboard is populated with the roles and features that are already installed, and we simply need to add a new one. So we'll click on Add Roles and Features. We could go up under Manage up in the upper right-hand corner and click that and choose to Add Roles and Features. Just different doors into the same room. We'll go ahead and click on Add Roles and Features. It's going to whir for a moment. And there it shows us the Add Roles and Features wizard. We're going to click Next. And we're going to click through a few prompts here. Uh, this is a role-based or feature-based installation, so we'll just go ahead and click Next. And we'll choose the single server that we have in this pool. If you have more than, obviously, you'd need to choose which one you want to install it on. And now we're going to choose Network Policy and Access Services. We'll click Add Features. Click Next. Click Next. I'm going to click through a few things here. Click Next again. You know, have you ever noticed, Microsoft is always seem to enjoy having us click through a lot of screens that don't do anything. And <laughs> there's no exception here. Click on Next. And we'll click on Install. You could choose to have it restart automatically, but I kind of like to control that sort of stuff. I don't like surprises, so that's up to you. It's going to whir for a moment, and then the installation will be done, and then we'll go in and configure it. We'll do an edit now, so you don't have to sit here and watch the progress bar go across for several minutes. And we're back after the edit, and as you can see, the installation is complete. It does take quite a few minutes to do that, obviously, depending on the power of your server and the amount of memory and so on. But we'll click Close. We'll click on Nap, and it'll whir for a moment. And then we'll go about configuring it to accept Radius authentication from our ASA. All right, so now we'll right-click on the server. We're going to choose Network Policy Server. Where's for a moment, as usual, adds the snap into the console. And we're going to right click on NPS. We're going to choose Register Server in Active Directory. 
Click OK. Yes, that's what I want. And we'll click OK again. Now we're going to expand Radius Clients and Servers. And we'll right click on Radius Clients, choose New. And we're going to add a new Radius Client. So we'll start by giving it a friendly name, and I'm just going to give it the same name that it's known by in the rest of the network, so that'll be ASA01. We'll put in its IP address of 192.168.101.1. We're going to come down and enter the shared secret. This has to match the password that you configure on the ASA. This is a machine-to-machine. -machine. This has nothing to do with the end users. This is the ASA authenticating itself against Active Directory. So this has to match whatever you configured on the ASA or whatever you're going to configure on the ASA, depending on the order. And we'll click OK. Now we're going to expand policies and we're going to right click on connection request policies and choose new. Give the policy a name. We'll call this ASA VPN. And we'll click Next. Now we'll add a condition. So we'll click on Add. And we're going to scroll down to Client Friendly Name. Right there you can see it. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And click on Add. And this is the name of the, the friendly name of the ASA. So it's ASA01. Has to match. Click on OK, and click on Next. And once again, we're going to click through a, a few screens. So again, we'll click on Next, and Next. We're going to set the attribute to Username. Click on Next, and Finish. But we're not done yet. We're just finished with that part of it. Now we're going to right-click on Network Policies, and choose New. Give the policy a name, and again, ASA VPN, something descriptive, so you can figure it out later on when you're looking at the configuration, trying to figure out what you were doing, right? Click on Next. We're going to add a condition, and this time it's User Groups. Click on Add. Now, in this particular screen, you'll add the Active Directory security group that you want to allow access to the VPN. and in the real world, you might want to narrow it down to maybe create a group called Cisco VPN Users or something like that. Uh, for our purpose here, I'm just going to say Domain Users. And we'll click through. Click OK. Now, by setting it, of course, to domain users, that grants everybody who has a user account in the domain access to the VPN. And as I mentioned, you may or may not want to do that. Um, but for purposes of the demonstration, I'm just making it simple. We'll go ahead and, and uh, click on Next. Here we specify access permission, and we'll go with the default, which is access granted, which automatically allows anybody in that group to have access to the domain, assuming that they are able to authenticate. So we'll click on Next. We need to select unencrypted PAP authentication here. So we'll click the checkbox for unencrypted authentication PAP and SPAP. And we'll click Next. Now it's warning you that you've selected one or more insecure authentication methods, but that's what's required with this particular configuration. So we're going to say no. We don't need to view the corresponding help topic. So click No. And click Next. And Next. And Finish. Now we can go to the ASA and test it. So now we're at a command prompt on our ASA. And before I actually test the authentication, let me show you what I've already configured on it as far as the AAA authentication. So we'll do show run AAA-server. And here you can see I've already got it set up with a AAA server group called Radius Servers. And I've identified the location of the Radius server and set up the password and so on. And uh, we have a video that shows you exactly how to do this as well. Uh, but this is all done. And we need to have this information in order to test the authentication. So let's give it a try. We're going to use the command test, AAA-server, authentication, 
Oops. And then we need to specify the AAA server group, which is radius servers. Then the location, which is 192.168.101.2. Username, user01. That's just some test name that I set up in Active Directory. Wasn't feeling very creative that day. And password, and user01's password is p at ss1234. So let's hit enter and see what happens. And there it is. It's successful. So those are the steps to set up Radius on Windows Server 2012. I've got a blog post at www.soundtraining.net slash blog that shows you the same steps that I just went over in the video if you'd like to have something that you can use to follow along. If you'd like more information, please visit our website at www.soundtraining.net. I blog at soundtraining.net slash blog. You can subscribe to our newsletter, which will update you when we have new videos and, and books and other training materials or learning resources at soundtraining.net slash newsletter. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Google+. And if you'd like more videos, we've got a ton of them. We try to add at least one a week, sometimes more, occasionally less, at soundtraining.net slash videos. And if you'd like the companion book, I'd love for you to have a copy of it. It's available at our bookstore at soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Well, I hope it's been helpful for soundtraining.net. I'm Don Crawley. I'll see you next time.